Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks, and I don't know that you'll ever draw this or engrave this, but this is a really neat product project, and I've got to be kind of quite honest with you. I need to quit looking at it. My eyes are getting funny looking, but this is really pretty easy, and you can do a number of things with this. So let's get these things out of the way so I can quit looking at them. Let's go to the center of the page. And I'm just going to take a two-point line, and I'm going to draw a straight line, and I'm just going to come straight down. I draw everything in here line, so I need to change it to a little bit thicker line and a black. And this is where there are several ways you can do it, but it doesn't have to be perfectly even. And you would think the duplicate key would help you here and it does but it doesn't really so we're going to make a duplicate of that and we're just going to move it minutely matter of fact I'm going to set my nudge on 0 0.05 and kind of move that back because the smaller the, the smaller the last one the better and then take your new one and control D and move it just a little bit more. Sometimes this is hard. And somebody might chime in and tell me you st uh, st step and repeat. But uh, a lot of times everything does it. And really, I would think the duplicate tool would keep duplicating it more each time. But it's not. Normally, when you duplicate something and move it, it it will move a little bit more each time. So we just, basically your first couple of lines are your most important ones. As a matter of fact, we might even go add one more to that. Uh, these lines don't really matter that much. And let's just do that. Let's make another line. And just barely, barely move it. And matter of fact, let's squish, let's squish this line in a little bit. And I know somebody's going to chime in here and go, well, you could use a step and repeat. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure this will work on all of it. And I'm not going to take that much time. You'll get the idea, and you'll just have to play around with this. But anyway, I've got them a little bit off center, so I'm going to hit T and put them to the top of the page, made them all equal. That's not that big a deal. Select them all and Control D, and then rotate them 90 degrees. Now we need to fill in all the spots that are inside this crosshair. So get your Smart Fill tool and fill in that one, that one, that one. We're skipping every other one. And whoop, see, I'm out of my crosshair. And then on this one, we're going to skip. And this might be actually easier to go the other direction. You know, zoom in and do all these lower ones first. It doesn't matter what order you do it in, Smart Fill Tool. And we'll just get these these minute ones out of the way. Nope, that's too far. So I might not have a big enough grid mark here, but it'll work. You'll get the idea. You're going to have to draw your own if you want to do this anyway. But it's a pretty fun project. Doesn't take that long a time. And a few more. And a few more. Really, I need to go to the other pass here again. I need to go down now. Anyway, we got it. And it looks pretty good. It ought to kind of look like a the lines ought to kind of look like a curve. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to left right click the mouse, no outline. Now take this and control D and make a duplicate of it. Holding down the control button when you get that handle right there and you're duplicating it up. Of course, we've duplicated a, a section we do not need. So get your pick tool, hold down the alt key and select those center blocks. 
Now we need to select all these. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Select all these and just grab that corner node and just have it snap to that. Control D and make a duplicate. Holding down the control button, same thing. Now it's going to do the same thing, it's, and that wouldn't look half bad. But hold down the Alt button and grab right through the center of that. Hit Delete. Grab just that very far node. And there you go. I think this one I did was a little bit better. Had a few more steps. But you kind of get the idea. And then what I would do is put a black box around it. So our entire shape is real quickly. We're going to make it 14 inches. And then draw you a rectangle. Holding down the control button. So you get a perfect rectangle and then make it 14 inches and then go over and get black make it a little bit thicker and black press p and put it in the center of the page i'll tell you what we look back up here let's select all our drawing and control g to group it together hit p Hit P, and now that, that line makes it a little bit better because the, the white edges kind of now show up. Now, how I did the, the other one, and that's I've used it many times for making balls, and I actually think this looks better. Um, you could really make it a lot bigger and, and really some finer lines. But just select it all and group it together, Control-G. Go up to Effects. Go down to Lens. Sometimes you have to click off No Effect and then, and see it even looks like a fisheye up in there. And we're going to use fisheye. Put Apply. And what happened, I do not know. Let's back up here. You know what, we got, there's some garbage right here. Okay, ungroup. And now let's stay a little bit closer to our object and group. There's something right here. I don't know what it is. Yep, there's a hidden line. Okay, put P, put it in the center page. That doesn't really matter. Go off of fisheye. And then go to fisheye. And hit apply. Oh, press. I don't use this now. Press frozen. There we go. And hit apply. Boy, boy, we've already done it. Anyway, that's pretty, pretty cool graphic. That would look really good in the uh, engraved, and that would too. It actually looks like a pillow. So I need to take a break and quit looking at this. Anyway, hope that was a little bit helpful and thank you for watching.